Hey, how's it going? So, uh, you heard that it was my birthday, right? Oh, uh, nobody told you? Well, it is, so, yeah. Excuse me, sir, you forgot to put my birthday discount on the, uh, the check? I'm gonna tip him 20% of the discounted total instead of the original total. That'll show him. Today's Wednesday, March 24th. I've successfully completed 23 revolutions around the sun, and you're watching Renegade. me it's not actually the 24th i'm sorry okay i planned on filming editing and uploading this video on my actual birthday day but i wound up having a ton of fun experiencing my birthday to the fullest instead of just focusing on my vlog also i spent more time on this video script than any other up to this point so get ready for a doozy birthdays are usually bittersweet for me especially now that i'm not a kid anymore my birthday always feels kind of like a checkpoint of sorts and it tends to leave me overblown with a lot of different emotions i usually spend a lot of those 24 hours getting introspective and pondering how far I've come as a human living on earth for the past year and during the times where I'm not doing that I tend to find myself making a considerable effort pretending like I enjoy being the center of attention more than I really do of course I enjoy and appreciate the happy birthday wishes I get each year and I'm grateful for everything that my family and friends do for me but only if I can tell that their desire to do those things is genuine and they aren't just acting on some obligation that they feel also I'm sure this has been talked about before but does anyone else feel naked and vulnerable when everybody's singing the happy birthday song especially when they sing it real slow and without a pre-established key so everybody's singing at different pitches now that I think about it it's kind of funny that after going through the motions for 23 years I still have no idea how I'm technically supposed to act in that scenario. Am I supposed to like just stand here and wait for it to end? Do I smile? No, don't smile. They'll be able to tell I'm forcing it. Do I like move my arms like this and do a white people dance? No, don't do that. That's even worse than just smiling. Help! Don't get me wrong though, my family and I love each other to death and all my friends make me feel loved too. But I think my ideal birthday might be one where the festivities don't necessarily have to include the more traditional aspects of the birthday celebration just because it's customary or whatever. For that matter, I don't really need there to be any festivities at all. Last year on my birthday, I spent most of the day sleeping and that was a choice that I made for myself. I'm sure not everyone thinks this way and I probably sound like a prick for saying this, but I believe the yearly reminder and celebration of your birth isn't about the cake, the gifts, the partying, or even the godforsaken happy birthday song. Those things aren't important to me. Oftentimes they feel really contrived and inauthentic and that's not what I'm about. Every year my birthday serves as a reminder of where I came from and everything that took place that ultimately led to who I am, the lessons I've learned, and what's going on in my life today. Even if it means I'll go most of the day feeling more melancholy than happy, all I really need is an internal conversation with myself and a moment to appreciate the fact that I've made it through another year on Spaceship Earth. This is amazing. Also, they're, the wheels of the carts are the same color as their hands, so Toad's is flesh color. It's really gross. <laughs> do, they, do they actually like... Well, so it's gonna be like, Wee! You can roll them, they're Hot Wheels. Man. No shit. <laughs> so, oh, I'm in. It's like two persons in one. Let's go. <laughs> Woo! I take back everything I said. Birthday parties are awesome. Yeah, I have the coolest sister on the planet. You jealous? As much as 22 had a positive and monumental impact on me as a whole, maybe even more so than any other year that came before it, I've kind of been ready to close the book on 22 for a while. I clung to a lot of cycles during 22 that at the time seemed too scary, impossible, or even unwise to break out of. And the fact that that entire year was spent under pandemic conditions didn't really help either. Congratulations to my fellow Aries signs out there because we're all celebrating our second pandemic birthday in a row this year. Six feet apart or six feet underground. Darling, I can't tell the difference. COVID definitely contributed to an overall setback in my life in 2020, but the break I got to take from the workforce allowed me to refine my intuition become more observant and analytical and accumulate much needed hindsight as well as an overall change in perspective that I think will be beneficial in the long run. After all, hindsight is 2020. If you've made it this far into the video, A, thank you, and B, be warned because everything I'm about to talk about from here forward is very personal and some of the topics I cover might be a little sensitive. I picked which details to include in the story I'm about to tell you very carefully and hopefully I'll have done a decent job of tying it all together at the end. My intentions in sharing my story aren't to garner sympathy or force everyone in the world to hear my problems. I make this video primarily for my own benefit down the line, but I also hope that if anyone watching can relate to any of this, they know that they aren't alone in this godforsaken world. Plus, it's my birthday, bitch, and I want to vent. Come on, let's get a little comfy with each other.
Damn, I should start buying like candles and putting them in the back or some shit. We can summon Satan together, guys. Chapter 1, I spent my teen years believing that I might not ever make it to 21 years of age. Not because I felt suicidal, but because I was living with a soul-crushing combination of fear and apathy. I literally just couldn't envision any path at all that could possibly be laid out for me that would get me to 21, let alone beyond. I felt like there was no point in even trying to go on for that long because that end goal was so intangible. In my early teens, my eyes started opening up to a lot of the problems with my country, the world in general, and especially the type of Christianity that I was raised under. I started to feel odd about the way some religious people try and shove their message of love and faith down people's throats and then turn around and either preach homophobia or do unspeakable things behind closed doors. And as a nerdy kid that was way into science, I definitely couldn't say I believed in miracles. Doesn't the idea of a man being born a virgin, living his entire life, never having sinned even once, and literally turning water into wine sound ridiculous? I don't know, I'm just a kid. I couldn't explain it back then, but I felt like I was being forced into pretending to believe and agree with something I didn't even fully understand yet. I was baptized at church when I was 13, and when the guy asked me if I believed that Jesus died for our sins and I wanted to accept him into my heart, I said yes. Not because I wanted to, but because I thought I was supposed to. I came to the conclusion that if even one organized religion is riddled with hypocrisy and makes me feel like I need to lie in order to be accepted, that must mean every form of spirituality or religion is bad too. Thus, I started to believe that there truly is no God, the universe is one and done, there's nothing after death, and my existence as a whole is arbitrary and the product of random chance. That shit is scary. But that was my reality. I felt that way for so many years, and I didn't know it at the time, but the only way I was ever going to break out of that pessimism was with a fuck ton of patience. Everything that started to unfold after that point, along with what it all would teach me, was completely unpredictable. Chapter 2, each of my four years of high school were spent at a different school. I struggled to make friends each time I moved, and I couldn't maintain very many of the relationships I'd made. During that time, my overall motivation started to sharply decline, and nobody, not even I, knew why. Before I knew it, I couldn't even make myself eat very much anymore, and I kind of looked like a skeleton for a while. That much can be seen in some of my older videos. Graduating high school felt like one of the most pointless things I'd ever accomplished, and waiting six hours just to walk down a stadium and grab a diploma from some guy I didn't even know felt incredibly contrived. At 19, I started community college, but not because I had an end goal with education. In fact, I had no goal whatsoever. I always assumed that the direction I wanted to take in life would come to me on its own, along with the confidence and the drive I needed to chase my dreams. But that never happened. All of a sudden I needed to make a decision and I couldn't explain it, but every possible option felt like the wrong choice. I started college because I felt pressured and obligated to get off my ass and do something to move forward, even though I couldn't place where that pressure or obligation was coming from. Along with the fear that I would never figure out a long-term plan, I became overwhelmed very quickly with the requirements of college because I wasn't prepared for the possibility that I couldn't keep up with them. Two months into the semester, I broke down. Not because I felt like I was behind in an academic sense, I never had any problems understanding and learning the material. I broke down because the anxiety and depression disorders I developed during my teens started to chain me back from going to class or doing any assignments at all in a way some people may not even believe. Not to mention I'm really bad with deadlines too and college has this way of making it seem like your entire life hinges on whether or not you meet those deadlines which only adds to the problem. Sometimes I found myself sitting in my car right outside the building where one of my classes would be for upwards of half an hour or more fighting with myself to try and suppress my anxiety enough to just go inside and sit down. Other times I found myself holding a pen above an open notebook in silence for several minutes at a time, feeling completely unable to start writing anything. It reminded me of my junior year of high school, which was the one year I did school online. I had the exact same problem back then too, with sitting in my chair, staring at the screen, looking at all the assignments that I had to do, and feeling powerless to start working on any of them. I did that for so many hours a day that if not for how nice the counselor was, I definitely would have failed some of those classes. And apparently in the years since then, I still hadn't gotten any better at handling that problem. I kept asking myself over and over, what am I doing wrong? Am I just lazy or am I fucked up in the head somehow? Neither option was desirable, and either way I couldn't handle it anymore. And what would become one of the most humbling things I've ever had to do, I wound up withdrawing from all four courses I was in, and to this day I have four W's on my transcript. Some people can relate to me on this one. I grew up an all A's gifted and talented student and I was constantly being told by grown-ups that I was ahead of the curve and going places. I vaguely remember one time in middle school being called a genius. A genius. Me. In middle school. What? And in my naivety, I ate that shit up. I grew a huge ego about how smart I was, and sometimes I'd even talk down on the other kids at school for being stupid. One time I even told my 8th grade English teacher that she was bad at her job because she made a minor grammatical error during a field trip. I was oblivious to how ignorant, inconsiderate, arrogant, and just plain mean I was sometimes. I felt like I had the right to flex my perceived intellectual superiority whenever possible because I'd been led to believe that getting good grades and following the rules 
directly translates to your value as a person. To this day, I still have no clue what put that idea into my head when I was a kid. And I can't imagine how different things would be for me today if I didn't ever have that mindset. My best guess is that it was a combination of society standards being bullshit, my own difficulty with interpreting what people say to me, and a gut impulse that says if I'm receiving praise, that must mean I'm doing something right and I gotta keep doing it. Looking back, that teacher was a really nice lady and I could be wrong, but I think she might've been trying to hide the fact that I genuinely hurt her feelings. As smart as I thought I was back then, I never realized that having a knack for memorizing and retaining information taught in schools doesn't automatically make you better than anyone else. In fact, that's complete and utter bullshit and don't ever let anyone convince you otherwise. I went from all that to dropping out of college in my first semester. Poetic justice? I felt like a complete failure after that, and an asshole. My self-worth had shattered completely and I was so ashamed that I didn't even tell my mom at first because I didn't want her to be disappointed in me. Come to find out, apparently she never had any expectations for my academia at any point in my life and the fact that that's what I believe resulted purely from my own misinterpretations. Wait, so you mean I don't actually have to do the college thing? I can, like, do what I want with my life? And that doesn't upset you? WHY DIDN'T YOU TELL ME?! And for that matter, what do I want to do with my life? Oh god, I don't know. In an effort to restore my lost faith in myself, I started waiting tables for a couple years, hoping for something life-altering to happen that would shift my perspective or change my direction, or at least help me figure out something that I might want to do or accomplish in my lifetime, hopefully without ever having to face any of my fears. This was also around the time I started smoking marijuana, which at the time I thought was the ultimate act of degeneracy. I'm already a college dropout, I might as well be a badass and start smoking some fucking weed! I learned that I was just ignorant though, and I was introduced to modes of thinking that I never thought were possible, and it helped me figure a lot of shit out. I'm not encouraging the use of drugs, by the way. All I mean to say is that the dangers and the immorality of smoking weed were always harshly over-exaggerated when I was a kid. And I never fully realized that until I finally tried it for myself. No wonder everybody's been telling me not to smoke this. I feel awesome. Food tastes delicious and music sounds amazing. Wait, what are we doing here? No, I mean, like, on Earth. Responsibility, my friends, is key. Chapter 3. Between years 20 and 21, I underwent what I can only describe as a complete spiritual overhaul and reformation. The longer I slugged through adulthood without a purpose or any long-term goals, the more I kept mentally breaking down over it. And each breakdown would be followed by several weeks of depression and inactivity. All I gotta do is make it through this funk until I feel normal again, and then I can start getting my life together. Right? Wrong, bitch, the time keeps ticking and you're still doing nothing. The daily existential dread that came with the acknowledgement of that fact swallowed me whole. Every day was an internal fight over whether my anxiety-depression combo was caused purely by external factors I had the right to place blame elsewhere and the whole entire world is bullshit, or if everything bad in my life was my own fault and I willed this existential dread upon myself just by being a bad person and a failure. I didn't know whose opinion I could trust, and I certainly didn't have a god that I could pray to and ask. So the fact that I was immobilized only led to me being immobilized for longer. After putting everything I had into my job for over a year in an effort to salvage even a fraction of the self-worth I once had, something happened that would change my life forever. One night we were understaffed, too many customers had different issues with their food all at once, the kitchen was backed up with orders, and if I recall correctly, either I or someone else messed up a to-go order that someone placed over the phone. You know, par for the course. If you've ever worked in food, you understand. I can usually deal with circumstances like that, but this particular night I was already stuck thinking about almost everything in my life all at once, and I was struggling to put that aside so I could focus on work. The stress, the anxiety, and the existential dread kept building and building as things continued to go wrong in the restaurant, and finally, the straw broke the camel's back. All of a sudden I found myself raising my voice, yelling swear words, hitting the walls with my fist, and kicking the door to the back every time I walked through it. I still remember what it felt like to lose control of my own body in a way I never have before or since. It was scary. Customers noticed what I was doing, but at that point I'd stopped caring completely about the consequences. Despite my astrology sign, I'm not really a violent or angry person at all. I've never laid a fist on another human being in my entire life, and if you're into astrology like I am, I think that can be attributed to my Aquarius moon. My baby rage isn't very masculine, and I probably looked like I was about to go shoot up a school or something over some first world problems at my job, and that thought didn't make me feel any better either. What I was doing was so bizarrely out of character for me that I was scared that I might actually hurt someone, but I couldn't get myself to turn off autopilot. Thankfully, before anything else went wrong, the night manager stopped me in my tracks amidst the chaos and he told me to go home right away and get some rest. Needless to say though, the GM wasn't happy with me and I could tell I'd successfully solidified myself in her eyes as someone who could no longer be trusted. Not long after that incident, I was fired from my job. That same ghost that haunted me during my junior year of high school and my freshman year of college was back at it again, stronger than ever. 
I started showing up to work later and later each day to the point where I started being upwards of three hours late if I even showed up at all. I never felt any kind of animosity toward my managers or my coworkers and I wasn't showing up late on purpose. I just wasn't able to wake up to my alarms anymore and if I could, I would often just go right back to sleep. They gave me chance after chance to eliminate that problem but no matter how hard I tried, no matter how much sleep I got, I just couldn't do it. So they let me go. I was angry, but once again, I was clueless as to where I should put the blame. Chapter four, around that same period of time, I started to realize that I didn't even know who I was anymore. I still couldn't visualize any kind of future for myself and I felt like a hollow shell of a person. I felt like a balloon that was so full of air that it might burst at any moment and I was only getting fuller. I became convinced that I couldn't move on in life in any capacity until I had a clear answer on what my identity was. After much contemplation, I came out as a trans woman and started going by the name Molly. Ah, I hate thinking about this shit. I don't know if anyone watching this video was around or has any memory of when I started carrying that identity, but it did bleed into my YouTube videos at times in ways I wish I could forget. <sighs> Today, I know the experience of identifying and living as a trans woman was a very important stepping stone in my life and I learned a lot from it, and I think addressing it at least once in video form is gonna be good for me. But back then, I wanted to believe so hard that I'd found my answer and I figured my identity out that I didn't realize I created a front that didn't at all resemble the person I really was and wanted to be deep down. I used that front to run away and hide from my pain, the poor decisions and mistakes I've made throughout my life, and the pain I've brought upon people I care about. I even managed to trick my own brain into burying my social anxiety and replacing it with a false sense of self-confidence. But it didn't last. This was also around the time I started drinking. I wasted a lot of people's time and energy, including my own, and I made a lot of people confused, including myself. I hurt people during that time too, and I even lost my mind completely a few times. I said things I didn't mean, and this is a huge understatement, but I did a lot of embarrassing stuff during that time, some of which had irreversible ramifications on both myself and others. Severe ones. The expectations I set for others to accept and honor this identity without question were unreasonably high, especially considering that I always had an inkling but never truly acknowledged how uncertain I was that I was even on the right track with any of this. Close relationships with close friends were severed and I asked myself, what the hell am I doing? What is all of this for? Is this really right? Am I really happy? After about a year and a half, being Molly started to feel like a big mistake. Don't get me wrong, the ambiguity I felt about my gender throughout my life has always been real. That's why I'm a they, them, not a he, him. But during that time in my life, I took it to an unhealthy extreme, and it was exhausting. Before I knew it, I was just as isolated and ambivalent as I was before I ever put on that mask. I consulted my new therapist about it over several sessions and ultimately decided that enough was enough, and I reverted back to my birth name and my they them pronouns. Again, this humbled me a lot. I was so embarrassed about how many people I had to break that news to. I spent so much time being brazenly off the mark about both my gender identity and my personal identity, and now I've perpetuated the stereotype that trans people aren't actually trans, just mentally unstable, and they're likely to regret their transition later in life. I'll never forget the shame I felt. Even now, I'm not sure if I'll ever live it down. But much like with the bad parts of my past and my sins I wanted so badly to forget about, I had no choice anymore but to face the music. So I did. Chapter five, it was hard and it took a lot of meditation and therapy, but after coming to terms with a lot of the truths I was ignoring, I started to approach the subject of my identity with truly unrestricted authenticity. No more placing unreasonable expectations on myself. No more forcing myself to mold and change for the satisfaction of others. And most importantly, no more running away. Since then, I've become more certain for real this time that I know what kind of person I really am on the inside and what kind of person I want to become as time goes on. All these memories that used to petrify me and convince me that I'm a horrible, irredeemable person are now building blocks that form the foundation of the tower that is and will be my life story. As unpleasant as a lot of these memories are to relive, it's also really important that I don't lose them. I can acknowledge that some or maybe even a lot of the stuff in my past that contributed to my hardships of today were out of my control, absolutely. But I can also hold myself accountable when I use those things as an excuse for shitty behavior and bad decisions. No, I'm not perfect and I never claim to be, but what I am is me. My name is Ryan, I'm 23 years old, I have long unbrushed hair, I love music and video games, and I just want everyone to be happy and safe. No pomp and circumstance necessary. That's just who I am. Earlier this year, on a night that I was intoxicated and barely paying attention to the world around me, I overheard a TikTok that someone was watching that immediately sobered me up. The girl in the video, whoever she was, thank you by the way, she said it was time to acknowledge that no matter what you do, you're never gonna be able to go back to the person you were before your trauma. I'll never forget that moment and how hard that message hit me, because she was literally spot on. I'm never going to be able to go back to the person I was fresh out of high school or even in my early teens. The time really did fly by and I never even noticed how much distance there is now between the me of today and the me of five years ago or even ten years ago. As much as those kids might bear physical resemblance to me a little bit and share some of my memories, it can't be ignored that they and the me that's talking to you right now aren't the same anymore. Not fully. 
22 was the year I really began to embrace the only consistency I've ever known in my life, which is literally a glaring lack of consistency. My life as a whole, much like my bedroom, is kind of a mess. And sometimes I still feel like a lot of my problems are over-exaggerated or even invalid. As I'm writing the script out and as I'm reading it to you right now, I'm still afraid in the back of my mind that I've spent this entire video talking out of my ass. But 22 was a reminder that, yeah, I really have stiff-armed my way through all of my darkest days. And from a fundamental standpoint, I'm doing just fine. On top of that, my early unfortunate demise at 21 one that I was bracing myself for is now two years past due, which when I sit down and think about it is really fucking remarkable. Now that I'm 23, I'm starting to believe that there really is a reason after all why I was brought into this world, specifically back when Titanic was dominating the box office and Aerosmith was rocking the charts. Likewise, it's finally starting to feel like there really is a reason why I'm still alive and it isn't all just a cruel prank that the universe is playing on me. I really am a puzzle piece that fits somewhere in the grand picture that is and will be the story of humankind. And whether I'm a corner piece, a side piece, a crucial piece with a lot of details on it, or one of the tons and tons of indistinguishable flat colored pieces that form the cloudless blue sky in the background, I'm okay with whichever one I turn out to be in the end. And I'm okay with not finding out which one it'll be until the time is right. After all, the fact that this puzzle came in a box disassembled and not in a picture frame already pre-completed is what makes not knowing where all the pieces go the exact thing that makes solving the puzzle fun. That uncertainty about what life's gonna throw at us next is exactly what gives life value and makes it mean something to us. And that value and meaning is why we celebrate birthdays. Epilogue, I'm sorry to say, but this story doesn't end with me figuring out what I'm gonna do with my life and finally feeling able to go out and achieve it. I still have a long way to go before I can finally say Eureka. I don't even know how the hell I made it this far to begin with. Is it luck? Is it willpower? Is it adaptability or ingenuity? I don't fucking know. Unfortunately, I still suffer from what I now know is referred to as executive dysfunction. That's the ghost, and that motherfucker is cruel. My biggest fear is that every choice is gonna feel like the wrong choice for the rest of my life and I'm never gonna be able to make it or find a sense of belonging anywhere. But 20 three says that shit don't matter just go babe and don't let go of your faith because your answer is going to reveal itself to you when you least expect it whether you like it or not and you don't got to be perfect but be the best you can be every single day no matter what because the answer you're waiting for is either going to greet you with open arms and a smile or it's going to kick you in the ass see i told you i get introspective on my birthday and by the way 23 feels pretty damn good so far i guess my birthday this year wasn't so bittersweet after all how you doing over there charlie <laughs> That was amazing! This is Ryan, don't wish me a happy birthday unless you really want to. You just got done watching Ryan again. Happy birthday to me. I'm now 23. Okay, I'll shut up now.